All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to IGTV. We have on the phone with us Maura uh, Ahuvia from uh, RSA's Knowledge Delivery uh, Fraud Action and Research Lab over in Israel. We're talking about man-in-the-middle attacks, and uh, Maura just went over the two unique control panels and some of the other features, uh, as well as the infection and the botnet size uh, that we just uh, were talking about. Hey, Maura, why don't you get more in the about the man-in-the-middle attacks Give us a little bit of a history lesson there. Right. I would love to give you a history lesson. So what happened was uh, a long time ago, uh, Trojans used to be just one step up from phishing attacks. So instead of stealing um, a user's uh, username and password, they would also uh, be stealing cookies and digital certificates. Um, and then, you know, banks kind of um, had to evolve their uh, security systems, and that's when one-time passwords were introduced into the banking system. Um, and that caused another uh, evolution step to go forward where um, man in the browser attacks were uh, created. And man in the browser attacks are fully automated. Um, so what happened was man, because man in the browser attacks were somewhat successful, banks did um, find solutions, create solutions recently that look at a user's browser and um, monitor the browser for any kind of manipulation. So fraudsters kind of saw that man of the browser attacks are not going that well, and that's when they decided to revert back to man of the middle attacks. Um, the reason for that, there are several reasons for that reversion. So as I said, first of all, on the security front, there are new products out there that do monitor um, a user's browser. Um, another thing is that man in the, man in the browser attacks require um, a very advanced skill set, which not all fraudsters have. You need to have a real uh, login in order to even program uh, a man in the middle attack. You have to know how the bank's website operates from the inside um, in order to uh, program uh, a fake transaction. So there's the product uh, reason, there's technical skills required, and then, you know, the lack of seeing a lot of um, man of the browser transactions fail, uh, sometimes because no mule account is available in real time or, you know, different reasons. But the, the manual layer gives the foster um, another level of control where he wouldn't have in a fully automate, automated uh, man of the browser attack. Okay, and are you finding criminals are still using this attack and method, and, and if so, why? So are we finding that fraudsters are increasingly using this method? Yeah, are, are, you, are you finding that there are criminals out there still using this type of attack? Definitely. Men in the middle attacks um, are out there. Um, the extent is not always uh, obvious because um, we don't always see the full functionality of a Trojan, but for example, SpyEye has um, a built-in RDP or remote desktop uh, plugin that comes uh, with its uh, kit. So if the, if the fraudster has the skills that, or the knowledge about how to perform an animal attack, he could do that because the functionality is built in. But then, of course, he would have to, uh, you know, have the, the HTML injections in place so he can pull extra information. Um, and they, he would have to customize those HTML injections so that the user actually believes that, that they're coming from the bank. And these a HTML injections, all, all this is is a, a code put right into the browser and, and sent, correct? Correct. HTML injections uh, involve uh, injecting extra HTML code into your browser. And that's when you see um, extra information fields that your bank usually would not ask for. For example, your one-time password or your to or sorry, not your one-time password, but like your date of birth, uh, social security number, anything that that is out of the ordinary. Ordinary. Um, sometimes uh, some banks use transaction passwords that are specific for a transaction. Um, and if you know, if um, a customer is used to seeing that after logging in, um, a victim would see that you know as uh, the first screen of uh, his online banking session. Yeah, I got you. Hey, listen, we've got about 30 seconds left here, all right? Um, I know, you know, uh, Itai was talking about the Zeus strain last week, all right? Um, are you seeing any kind of trends of criminals migrating back uh, to the old manual techniques? Because right now, according to what you just said, you know, they have to have a fairly high skill set, all right, for the man in the browser attacks. Are you seeing any, any trending in that area? 
Um, so I'd just like to clarify. Um, Go. When we say when we say man in the middle, we're talking about manual session hijacking. Right. Meaning meaning that the fraudster needs to be in front of the server in order to hijack the session. Man in the browser attacks are the ones who that require um, a higher skill set. Right. Because because they involve um, intercepting uh, a transaction in real time and in, involve, sorry, and they involve um, inside and just knowledge of how the bank uh, processes the transaction. All right. Well, so that's why they would be reverting to man in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I, we're always stuck with time here, Moab. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, that was uh, uh, Mo Ahovia from uh, the Knowledge Delivery RSA Fraud Action and Research Lab over in Israel. And Moab, uh, give our best to Itai over there. And thank you very much for coming on the program today. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Bye. All right. So that. that